and the 1960 Rising was really the founding act of our democratic state, and at the time it was an insurrection against the largest empire in the world. As we gathered in the chapel here in old Kilmainham jail, I think about these past few weeks, oh will they say we failed from our school days, they have told us we must Chuck learn law. for liberty, the e -jake -jake. But but all want in this the Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens. Oh Grace, just hold me in your arms and We declared the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland. The students of College the Aina wish to recognise and honour the sacrifice of all those men and women who fought and died in 19th The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights for all its citizens. time to share our love so we must say goodbye. Now I know it's hard for you, my love, to ever understand the love I bear for these great men, my love for this dear land. So when Parik called me to his side down in the GPO, I had to leave my own sick bed to him. Just hold me in your arms and let this moment linger. Um, I did this They'll painting and it and is a butterfly with the tricolour on it. The orange represents the Protestants with and the green represents the Catholics and it is fading into peace. And a fun fact is the most common type of butterfly is the monarch butterfly. So, so it represents the birth of the Republic and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies, to be sovereign and indefeasible. Free with you. Hardly a hard your father is privileged on Benchon Yo. I guess that's why I'm a couple of fucking Raleigh, Erokoid Kostarul. It's a great, great privilege to be here with you all today on what I think is a very historic occasion. Well, we are celebrating. 1916. And I suppose for this generation, 1916 seems like a totally distant world. And it is obviously 100 years ago, and the world was very, very different in 1916 compared to the world that you live in. The 1916 Easter Rising was the year the Irish tried to rise up and rebel and try and free themselves from, from British rule and make Ireland an independent republic. Although we lost this rebellion, it was not the rebellion itself that changed Ireland to the amazing country we have today, but what came after. Sparks of new ideas, writers writing about the tragic deaths of the IRA leaders. This was a huge changing point for Irish history and one to be proud of and celebrate. Irish men and Irish women, the students of Colossus de Aenia wish to recognise and honour the sacrifice of all those men and women who fought and died in 1916 for the dream of achieving an independent Irish Republic. Their courageous example inspired the eventual achievement of that dream of those who followed them. Now, in, 19, in 2016, it is our duty to strive toward the full realisation of the ideals set out in the Proclamation of Independence 1916 and to set out our own vision for the future of Ireland. We acknowledge that the Ireland of 2016 is much changed from the Ireland of 1916. One of the interesting aspects of the Rising, when you look at it, is that the Rising actually arose from the fact that you had a newly educated generation. Um, so basically my painting is of the GPO, which is where the 1916 Rising took place. And I chose to do my painting in black and white to sort of emphasise the history behind it, as obviously they would have used black and white pictures during the day, uh, back in the day. And I have a colourful tricolour to symbolise the modern Ireland that happened because of the 1916 Rising. 
Now, Ireland in 1916 was a very different place, and one thing about history is there are always two sides of it. Most people in Ireland, and indeed in Galway, uh, would belong on the tradition up there on the right and celebrated the poppy, celebrating the part of Britain and involvement in the First World War. But just a tiny minority went the other way and followed Wolf Tone and believed that there should be a rising. Very few, nobody in Galway itself, most people in Galway supported the war and the clatter of Galway gave more people to the British Navy than any other community in the world. But uh, just a minority fought, mainly in Athen Rye in Galway, and uh, about 1,400 in all fought in the 16 Rising. It was over before it began. They all knew the outcome, but there was no Irish man or woman who would have ever run. They marched like soldiers to their demise for freedom and comrades who had died. No sane man would have called it wise, but they knew which they valued more out of life and pride. Then the rising began, the Irish spirit awoken. They fought to the end, unbowed, unbent, unbroken. Chuck your law. The Luan and Ejig Shajig, Shraj and the Kuna Vian, on Shinner Nos Naguya, Hussi Ayer Machna Koshka, Flockna Air in the Shelf, Er Jacobs, Bullets on GPO, Bonagachi Fossick and Nabritana, La Inzaka Vian Gajo, Shas Port McFearosh Air and GPO, Hog Shay Mach and Bunnot, Hussi Shag of Lay, Hussi Shag Levo Sword, Vinadini Kuna Gestot, Huyan Helga Susan Niffa, Eg Bumal on GPO, Yalna Goel Gord the Nobodge, on Tal of a Kalchid for though. On Shin Hussey Nafornivu, Kant, Clark McDermida, Shin and Fawn Hussey, on Kugam Moore and the I'm here today with Mr. Tierney and I'm going to ask him a few questions about the 1916 Hurling of Ireland final. 
Very good, Joe. Um, how many people were at the game, sir? Um, it was estimated that only 5,000 people attended the game. Um, and it wasn't played until 1917 in January, um, for obvious enough reasons. And where was the game held? Uh, it was held in Old Crow Park. Um, so the two teams involved were Tipperary and Kilkenny. What did the teams wear? So just kind of, it was actually at the time it was um, a club representative who represented the county. So you had a club team playing. So um, so the team from Tipperary won um, the All Ireland that year. And what team was playing from Kilkenny? Um, Tullerone, I think, from Kilkenny, and I can't think of the second name. Bally, someone like uh, they're not as well known anymore. Was how many counties in? Ireland were taking part in it? Um, I'm not quite sure the exact figure. It was similar enough to today. Uh, I know go we were beaten in the semi-final by Tipperary um, and on a scoreline of 8-1 to Tipperary and no score to Galway. So, um, poor enough show really, Joe. Was it, um, was it the same positions as today? Yeah, it was 15 aside from what I gather, um, but it was largely ground hurling. Um, and if a ball came in the air, they'd try striking in the air. So, um, and normally then maybe a politician or a priest or uh, the bishop might have started the game. Knowing my grandparents, I was an adult when they died. They knew these people personally because they were about the same age as them, because they were a very young generation when they got involved in the rising, most of them, with the exception, of course, of Tom Clark. They spoke to us of them as very, very ordinary people, as real people, people with their strengths and weaknesses, people who had families, and many of the leaders left young families behind them, and all of the people who went out to fight, an awful lot of them had young, had uh, uh, spouses and had children, and they were making huge, huge sacrifices. I was down in County Meath at the weekend, and there was a Philip Clark who got shot at the College of Surgeons. With, he was there with Countess Markievicz and Michael Mallon, and he left five children behind him. And his widow had to rear those children, and that was a huge challenge. As down the glen on Easter morn to a city fair rode I, there are lines of marching men in squadrons pass me by. No fife did hum, nor battle drum did sound its dread tattoo. But the Angelus bell or the leafy swell rang out through the foggy dew. Right proudly high over Dublin town they hung out the flag of war. For those who died at Easter tide in the springing of the and the world did gaze in deep amaze in the fearless men but few who bore the fight that freedom's light shines through the fog and dew. We have a solemn duty to remember the huge legacy left to us and to make sure that we work honestly and to the best of our ability for all of the people. The Rising itself, of course, was a very, very difficult time for the people who participated. And my grandfather was Eamon de Valera. And we obviously knew him very well when I was growing up. He was just a grandparent. We used to visit him very, very regularly up in Oris and Uchtra, and I can even remember before he went to the Oris. And he wasn't any different than you'd expect any grandparent to be. He was very chatty, and he was very willing to talk about events. But the funny thing was, I remember him saying, and he kind of turned the conversation to a serious point, and he said, we fought 
so that they wouldn't have to walk six miles to get an education. And if I wanted an explanation of what 1916 was about in one sentence, I would say that that sentence that he said maybe explained it better than anything else what this is all about. It's about ourselves, it's about our own identity, but it's also about our own ability to create a much better life for everybody who lives in this country, no matter where they came from, no matter what their beliefs are, that we try to create together a better life for everybody. So it's my great pleasure to be here, and I hope you have a fantastic day, and I hope you continue to study our history. Not to live in the past, but I think by understanding the past, it gives you the inspiration to create a much better future. So go to Mila Mila Mahagui, I could say, Tasulam Ganaide Harkin, the Shingelo Rasuskal Gamagai. As we celebrate 100 years since the 1916 Easter Rising, we remember the leaders, the brave men who fought from the rebel captured buildings, those involved in the Rising's planning, and those who were accidentally caught up in the fighting by simply being in the wrong place at the wrong time. The commemoration in 2016 has given us a lot more insight into the lives of these rebels, these poets, writers, artists, men who followed their dreams. The 1916 leaders had great visions of equality and inclusiveness, the Irish proclamation being the only one of its era that mentions both men and women equally, beginning Irish men and Irish women. This ideal was implemented immediately as Irish women over the age of 21 were given the right to vote in 1918. Young Irish women are now the best educated in Europe, with 60% of 30-year-old women having a third level education. This is 20% better than the EU average. The seven signatories fought for a republic with a guarantee of religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all of its citizens. Our school, Kalash the Enya, is the proof of this acceptance and diversity with over 40 different nationalities. The Irish people gave up their lives, families and jobs, all to achieve the free republic that we enjoy today. Before his execution, Macdermott wrote, I feel happiness, the like of which I have never experienced. I die that the Irish nation might live. We must not take our liberty for granted, but celebrate these courageous citizens' efforts. Parik Pierce, a teacher, barrister, poet, author, and one of the proclamation signatories believed that language was vital to the identity of a nation. Saving the Irish language was key. And still, 100 years later, Irish is compulsory in all schools. Clark, MacDermida, MacDonough, Pierce, Kant, Connolly and Plunkett, men willing to die for their country, for liberty and sovereignty. Fast forward 100 years and Ireland has changed utterly as WB Yeats predicted. We must remember these rebels' passion, determination and strength as we raise our tricolour flag. Our national flag is an emblem of peace, a call for solidarity, mutual trust, sisterhood and brotherhood. This is indeed a vision worth championing, an ideal that it is imperative we continue to cherish and nurture. We remember not just the rebels, but also the many civilians who lost their lives the Easter week, the children killed or wounded in the crossfire, the families who are grief-stricken by the loss of a loved one, and in doing so, we must also commit to ensuring that never again is such a loss of life allowed to happen in our country. Thank you. Irish men and Irish women, the students of College de Aina wish to recognize and honor the sacrifice of all those men and women who fought and died in 1916 for the dream of achieving an independent Irish Republic. Their courageous example inspired the eventual achievement of independence by those who followed them. Now, in 2016, it is our duty to strive towards the full realization of the ideals set out in this proclamation, 
and to set out our own vision for the future of Ireland. We acknowledge that the Ireland of 2016 is much changed from the Ireland of 1916. Many socio-economic advances have been made. The abject poverty of tenement slums and rural Ireland of the 20th century has largely been consigned to the past. Yet, in the Ireland of today, many children and families still fall below the poverty line. The Ireland of 2016 is far more culturally and ethnically diverse than its 1916 counterpart. We must be vigilant to ensure intolerance, prejudice and racism are not allowed to raise their ugly heads. The equal standing of women in society was clearly outlined in the proclamation and although we have gone some way in achieving this, true equality has not yet been realised. And so in 2016, we, the students of College de Aina, declared the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership and sovereignty of Ireland. We declare the right of all Irish citizens to live in a diverse and tolerant society. A society where all citizens are presented with equal opportunities and the right to the pursuit of happiness. We declare the right to a truly free education for all and the right of the young people of Ireland to live and work in the country of their birth, should they so choose. We declare the right of Ireland citizens to have access to the highest quality of medical care and to be treated with dignity when under that care. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights for all its citizens, a fair and independent judicial system, the care and protection of our most vulnerable citizens, homes for our people, and a clean environment in which to live. Furthermore, this Republic guarantees that Ireland will carry on its proud tradition of peacekeeping, both at home and abroad, and our continued commitment to delivering aid to the world's most needy people. Remembering our own history of emigration, we pledge to make Ireland a place of refuge for those fleeing war and prejudice around the world. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the democratically elected government of Ireland and the people of Ireland, and we pray that they do not dishonour it by ignorance, cowardice, inhumanity or greed. We, and all the students of College de Aina, bear the responsibility of upholding the ideals and visions laid out in this proclamation, and of holding our electorate representatives to account. Signed, on behalf of the students of College de Aina. Tom Crumlish, a fourth year student, is going to read to us the Proclamation of 1916, read, first read by Parik Pierce. <clears throat> Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland, through us, summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organized and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open military organizations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal herself, she now seizes that moment and supported by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished, except by the destruction of the Irish people. 
In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they've asserted it in arms. Standing on that fundamental right, and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state, and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare, and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to, and hereby claims, the allegiance of every Irishman and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts, cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDiarmada, Thomas McDonough, P. H. Pierce, Eamon Kant, James Connolly, and Joseph Plunkett. Now the tricolour flag that we have here behind us is a great symbol. It's presented to us as a gift in 1848 by Thomas Francis Maher. Maher of the sword he's called. He was from Waterford and the building is still there. It's now a hotel. And it was raised above the GPO for the rising of 1916. And it's a great tricolour and a great symbol. The green represents the Catholic nationalist people of Ireland. The orange represents the unionist Protestant people. And the white represents peace between both communities, which is the most important thing that we have. And the great uh, Good Friday Agreement and the peace that we have have in Northern Ireland since 1998 is the, one of the greatest things that came out of it, celebrated in our flag. We have, we're going to have a flag raising ceremony, uh, our, our tricolour, which was presented to our school, our college, last week in Croke Park. And uh, all of the schools in Ireland were represented. And we were really proud to have three students up there. And the student who received it on behalf of our college was Isil Murphy. And Isolt is a great-great-granddaughter of one of the most iconic women in Irish history, that's Maud Gan. And now this, this presentation is very symbolic because she's presenting it to the grandson of Eamon de Valera, who, as Mr Leary has said, was the Commander-in-Chief in Boland's Mills. Hi, uh, my name is Isolt Murphy, and today is important for me on the centenary of the Easter Rising because I'm related to Maud Gan, who is my great-great-grandmother. I think this is really interesting and fascinating because she played a really huge part in Ireland and she was a suffragette and got rights for women and was a really huge part of the culture and she was iconic in Ireland. It's really interesting for me to learn more things about my family history and I love learning about the history of Ireland. <laughs> Fasta, <laughs> 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 
Legan es kreach, le lavach na beliw. Shalif kanik haram.